Let me well, welcome sure. everyone. Uh, can I see a couple thumbs up if my audio is good? Everybody can hear me? Sounds good. Okay. Well, yep. this is something we haven't done before, but the reason we're doing it is because we have a couple of new programs or sessions at the summit and we wanted to uh, introduce them. It's not too late to get involved in them, even though the, the vast majority of this of the uh, program has already been determined. But th these these sessions still give anyone an opportunity to to participate in the summit if they're not already doing so, or even if they if they're already doing so. But so we're going to talk a little bit about those, show some examples, answer any questions, and then most importantly, embed in your brains the deadlines for submission. Um, so Sarah, let's go to the next slide. So we're going to have a CINE session this year, and the theme is going to be how I did it or how we did it or how we do it. And basically, we want in this session for our uh, members or participants to submit uh, a video. Um, it can be, um, you can capture it any way you'd like. If it's thoroscopic imaging, that's okay. If it's if it's a head cam a shot like demonstrating here, um, it's it just the only qualification is it has to be a video and it can't be longer than five minutes. But um, it can show what we'd like it to show is, is is a technique that you think is valuable to promulgate. It could be something quite mundane, actually, if it's a good quality video and it shows something that we commonly do, but you've never really seen it visually uh, portrayed before. As you know, we have educational video offerings on our website, but they're primarily cadaver videos. And I don't know about you, but I prefer to look at live human uh, anatomy and and uh, and uh, it's just more realistic. So so the, the idea is, is you can, you'll submit a video, uh, edit it to less than five minutes. You can add the audio onto the video. It can be embedded or you can um, you can narrate it live from the podium. We expect the presenters to come to the podium to host their presentation and then be available to answer questions. And if you if you choose to narrate live your video, then that opportunity exists for you. You can submit more than one. It's unlikely we'll take more than two from an individual surgeon or, or institution, uh, but there, there could be exceptions to that depending on how many submissions we get. The committee will review the um, the uh, submission as soon as you send it to us and get word back to you that it's accepted, it's acceptable, it's it's it fits in this session, that sort of thing. So it's there's um, it, you're, you're we, we, what we what we want to stress is that we want to dialogue on these sessions back and forth. The primary reason for that is if we if everything comes in on a, on a certain day like abstracts do, it's extremely challenging for us to plan uh, for the size of the session, the number of uh, people in the session and all that sort of stuff. So we want to know about your intent to submit in this category or in the other two categories we're going to talk about. We really want to impart this message that we want to know from you, even if it's just an incipient idea or it's something that you're planning to capture a week from now when you have a case or a month from now when you're doing a redo or something, just let us know that you have the intent to submit so that we can plan for that. If you go to the website and you go to the summit website, there are some tabs there. You click on those, you can submit your, your intention to submit a, 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 a product. The final product must be submitted by midnight on March 15th. That's one month before one month and a few days before the summit itself. That will give us sufficient time to uh, plan and organize those sessions. So if you're accepted, we expect you to, to attend and present it. If you're not going to attend, you're not going to present. We're not going to have any remote presentation capability. Now, if you have a partner that's showing, coming to the meeting and you're not, and you have a surrogate to present your submission, that will be perfectly acceptable. So um, I think that covers the CINE session. Why don't we hold all of our questions to the end? So um, five minutes or fewer, audio is encouraged, but don't worry if you can't do it and you'd rather narrate from the podium or you'd like to do both. And the formats that we accept are MP4, MOV, and, and WMV. I have no idea what those mean. Sarah, do they need to be clarified further or just 
these people know what those are. No, okay. they'll know what that means. <laughs> Next slide, please. Okay, so what kind of things are appropriate? Anything really that you want to capture by video and it's related to chest wall injury is acceptable. Most, most of these are going to be surgical things, but it doesn't have to be. If you wanted to capture how you're a physical therapist and you want to capture how you mobilize a, a stuck shoulder or you want to you know, demonstrate a, a, a taping technique that you use for, for, for you know, some sort of rib malady, um, that's fine. The videos do not have to be surgical videos. Uh, we want to distinguish this from the next session we're going to talk about, which is the Frankenplating. So these are these are these can be simple or complex, unusual approaches, exposures, but not freakishly weird um, approaches. We're going to confine those to to another session that we're going to talk about here in a moment. Okay, next Frankenplating. This is uh, going to happen on, on Thursday. Uh, I don't think I mentioned when that session was going to be the the Cine session. Was that on Friday, sir? Or uh, there it is, Thursday from four to five o'clock. We have one hour slated for the Cine session. Okay, Frankenplating. This is an idea of Doctor um, Everett Erickson. He uh, proposed this idea of a session where we uh, present wickedly creative things that we've done, uh, good or bad. Um, and the success of the, of the technique is irrelevant. And it's mostly <laughs> going to be ju judgment free, although I'm sure you're going to get some pushback if you do something completely outrageous. But I think one of the thing, really cool things about rib fracture repair and chest wall injury surgery is that it's relatively new. A lot of the techniques are not well established. It's not like trying to invent some new way to fix a femur. I mean, they're, they're all fixed the same way, but we have the luxury of being able to be creative and to be, um, you know, innovative. We still do that. And I think this is an opportunity to, to celebrate the creativity of this group. So I want you to think about this moving forward over the next couple of months. Maybe you already have a case. This does not have to be a video. In fact, many of these will probably not be videos. This is just a brief presentation, pictures, x-rays, uh, of of this of something that's kind of out there, um, a creative solution to a problem, and um, and and why you why you thought it would work, and maybe it did work, and you have some some uh, evidence that it that it worked. So uh, I think that's fairly clear. Um, same submission process. Let us know if you intend to submit something like this, and then we will reserve a spot. And then the actual submission will be due same deadline, March 15 at midnight. Next. We don't know exactly the parameters of the presentations. It'll depend somewhat on how many of these we receive. If we receive 12 of them, then we're going to have, you know, five minute slots. If we get six of them, you might have 10 minutes. Uh, we, we will determine that based on how many of these uh, are submitted. And uh, it's very likely that it's going to be accepted. It's very We're going to have a very high acceptance rate, I'm quite certain. But we'll do the same thing. We'll look at these in real time, and we'll let you know if this is the category that this presentation should go into. And we will um, we will we'll be prompt in, in keeping you apprised of the status of your submission. But please communicate with us. Let us know if you're planning to do one of these. Don't just surprise it. Surprise dump this on us at... 11.45 p.m. on March 15. We're just asking for that courtesy so that we can plan ahead. Next, please. Posters. We've done posters different ways in the past. I still think there's a role for poster sessions. I think they're an excellent opportunity for presenting material that doesn't quite meet podium standards. And uh, I really like posters and as, as the rest of the committee. Um, we're going to use an old-fashioned paper technique on boards but there's a little twist here. If you submit a poster, we're going to ask you to prepare a presentation and deliver that via Zoom to the educational committee sometime in March. And could be, I guess we could probably spill over into early April. I'm not sure. Sarah, you can fix uh, any of the inaccuracies that I've, I'm pushing here. But basically, everybody that wants to submit a poster is going to get an opportunity to present their poster to the education committee. The education committee is going to Thank you for your presentation, and they're going to accept your poster. It'll you you can you'll you'll come to Charlotte. You'll put it on the board, but.
but that that presentation will allow the committee to determine a group of finalists. There's probably going to be five, and those finalists will be invited to go to the podium at Char at Charlotte on Saturday at 10:30 for an hour long session, and we will we will hear from the podium the five or six best posters, and so uh, the the determination of of uh, the finalists will be done before the meeting via Zoom. Everybody will get a chance to to present their poster. Similar um, uh, or identical deadline date, March 15, midnight. And again, let us know your intent. The other thing that's important here is if you submitted an abstract for scientific podium consideration and you don't get selected, there will be some of those. We have 48 abstracts and we have, help me, Sarah, 24 or 28 slots for presentation. 30 slots. 30 slots. So there will be some of you whose presentations will not be accepted as, for a podium presentation. All of those will qualify as a poster. But, but uh, if you want to be considered to be a finalist and win the best poster award, then you have to be prepared to present to the group via Zoom, the, the committee via Zoom sometime in March. So again, communication, let us know what your intent is and uh, no, no, uh, no limit on the number of posters. Uh, I know that we, we say that we won't accept more than two from an institution, but post the, the bar for, pre, the, you know, we, we like posters. We'll probably take as many as get submitted. And so if you have three or four from your institution, go ahead and submit them all. There will be poster walkabout time during the summit, just like in a normal meeting. These are not e-posters. They're not supporting an e-poster format. You have to bring a physical poster to the meeting. So I'm going to pause at this point, ask Sarah to correct any inaccuracies that I might have peddled on the group. Anything? Um, no inaccuracies I could I, that I noted. Wow, that's yeah. a first. Right. Do you want to clarify anything that I said? <laughs> um, you know, just the website. So our, I will put the URL in so that we are all on the same page here. I'm going to pop that in the chat and you can submit um, any of these. You can submit your intent um, there. You can email me if you have something. Um, but there are different categories. And if you submit for one category and then we're looking at it and we say, yeah, yeah, it's not really Frank and Plating, it's really more this other, you know, or, or whatever, then we'll we'll reach out to you and let you know that, you know, we we think we ought to make a switch. So um no no stress there. If you're worried about submitting at one versus the other, you don't have to submit multiple times. Just let me know what you're thinking. Thank you, Sarah. Any, any questions or comments from the audience on any topic? It's nice to see you guys. Uh, yeah, hi, Tom. Um, Hello. Hi. Um, I, I was wondering, I, I really like the idea of the Frankenstein session. Um, it got me mind-boggling on some cases I might uh, be interested in um, introducing. Um, uh, it, it does that also involve video or is it just a presentation? It, it can be video. All the video session, all the CINE session uh, presentations have to be video, but the Frankenplating can be whatever format you, you have. So video is okay. fine. Slides, pictures are fine. X-rays, drawings even. Um, so uh, you don't have to have a video to submit to the Frankenplating session. Yeah. Okay. Okay. John, you got anything swirling around in that dome of yours? No, it's bedtime. Nothing. Again. Yeah. I think the Frankenplating idea is great. I, I, I um, what are they called? Neologisms, the, the, the words that, the new words that, that we produce. And I, I think it's, I think it's great to come up with something, something like that. Um, I'm sure that there will be, I don't know how many we'll get, but I, I suspect there'll be half a dozen wacky cases coming out um and 
I guess the, the hopefully they will already be existing rather than people doing something crazy for the sake of a podium. Yeah, um, <laughs> we should qualify that. Not yes. that I'm not that I'm not that I'm at all tempted to to, uh, to do something crazy in the next few few weeks. Um, but um, but yeah, it, it it'll be really interesting to see. Um, and I guess the the my only concern is that if we are going far off label. Um, in terms of what is um, made public, in terms of the meeting thereafter, because um, I think I think if we, if somebody does something really crazy, we just need to be a little bit cautious about about it being public after. Well, not public, even to the delegates online afterwards. It, yes. it may be for for you know for now only. Um, but I guess, I guess that's something that we'll we'll work out yeah. when 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 we know what's coming through. So, I see the doctor Erickson point, just is making on the line. very clear about that throughout the session that you know because I think the organizations will be I mean kind of like in the picture that was there about where you showed that stacking plates and things you know sure. I, I'm sure the reps will be having just the hives about the different things that they're seeing with their product or things like that uh or maybe it'll give them new ideas I don't know but um really but I, I, but I think just, I, yeah it it definitely will be important that we disclose that these are off-label uses. That'll that's that, part of the whole CME process is disclosing think, when you're going off-label too. So we'll be really off, specific. Off-label, off-label, and off-record. I think is probably the off way. Off the reservation. Because, you know, they they <laughs> yes, will be completely freaked out. Indeed. I have to say that some of our we, we have a UK thoracic forum, and at the, the forum there's always a um, a kind of you know an oops case where the outcome has to be bad. Um, and and actually, they are. The, I won't say they're amusing because that's not fair. But they are incre usually extremely educational, um, and you know, taking your airing your dirty linen in public is is a good process every so often. Um, but I think yeah, you just have to. I think people will submit more if they know that yes, this is the whole point is being off label and a bit out there, but also it is not going to be made public. Um, it's for those in the room to, 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 to consider, but not for public consumption thereafter. I think that would probably be a good idea to publicize it that way. Yeah. Thank you, John. I see that Dr. Erickson's on the call. He actually uh, is responsible for this neologism, frankenplating, and the idea. Uh, Everett, you want to make some comments about how you conceive of this and what your vision is for this session? Sure. So I can't take full credit for this. Half of this came from Sean Diefenbacher, my old fellow, um, as we share cases back and forth on a regular basis and kind of say, hey, look at this, look at this, check out what I did today um, kind of things. I think John's points are good ones um, in that we probably need to make sure that it's very explicit, that it's off label. And I think it raises a question of should this be a session open to industry or not? Um, do we want to put stuff like that out there and have everybody in the industry looking at it versus people not necessarily knowing about it unless we decide to publish it as case reports, which, you know, is something to, something to mull over. I don't know what the right answer is on that, Tom. My initial impression uh, is that they ought to be in the room. They ought to be, they ought to, I mean, maybe this will stimulate them to go back and talk to their engineers about different ways to tackle problems. I, I don't think we could hide this from them or should hide it from them, but that's just at first glance. Yeah. And I, I don't, I don't have super strong feelings either way. I don't have anything that's overly racy. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna get myself in too much trouble, but there might be something crazy out there. Yeah, I know, John, you expect more out of me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think, I think it's going to be a fun session. I'm interested to see what we get submitted. And if we get something too off the wall, you know, we may have to um, curb people's enthusiasm if it seems like something that shouldn't be put out there. But hope, hopefully it will get people thinking a little creative. And I think it'll be a fun session. Yep, I agree. Dr. Thomas, any comments? I think I'm off mute. Uh, no, no, not... Yeah, you answered the question I had, which was uh, uh, posters coming from uh, anything rejected from the podium sessions. Um, and then 
Uh, I think the Franken plating will be good. I agree with you. I, I don't really necessarily think we should uh, close it out. Um, I also, uh, if there's something that looks like it's, you know, uh, frankly, malpractice, we probably ought to uh, yeah. curb that. <laughs> sure. Uh, or condemn it or present it and condemn it. It depends on who the presenter is and their their willingness to handle criticism. But I think we'll 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 make sure that nothing too crazy happens. I, I, I would ask you in the future not to use the word reject from presentation when discussing abstracts that don't quite meet the 30 threshold. Let's use a different term, shall we? That their, their, their quality. I mean, you might be 31 or we 32. We guide or them into another category. Yes, we're guiding them into a different category. <laughs> yes. I really wish we could present them all, but they're, they just don't have time. So, um, Dr. Greifenstein, any thoughts? He's there. Uh, no, uh, outstanding uh, ideas. I think it's going to be really fun. Maybe just uh, make sure we have some ground rules about, um, you know, the, the the be respectful. Yep. Respectful, irreverent. Uh, the audience, yeah. uh, you know, limit heckling or not. I don't know. Maybe it should be a mess. I don't know. <laughs> um, but this is exciting. This is really cool. Great idea. Okay. All right. Sarah, we have any other announcements for this group? I would encourage this. Well, first of all, thank you all for your attention today and your enthusiasm for this. And May you all have a, a blessed holiday. Find some time to relax and decompress a bit. We all need it, Lord knows. And um, and and thanks again for your your enthusiasm and your support for CWIS. We appreciate it. Okay, this is recorded, so it yes, will be available. I think on Dr. The Edwards has a question. Oh, John. No, I'm just saying it's a good start to the holiday season. Talking to you guys. Indeed. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So if you have someone or if you have, if you want to re-reference this discussion or you have, you want to direct someone to the web, to the website, they can, they can watch this instructional piece. But the, the, the primary thing is communicate with us. I know Sarah complains about, you know, 1400 emails she gets every day, but she secretly loves to hear from people. <laughs> and so uh, let us know what your intentions are. And that, that would be uh, over communicating is better than under communicating in this realm, I think. Uh, All right, guys. Hey, Tom, can I, can I bring up one idea for you real quick? Yeah. It just crossed my mind. Frankenplating, um, should that be presented by the attending of record? My, my bias on that is yes, because we're presenting weird stuff. The head guy ought to be the guy, not the, the fellow put up for shoot, getting shot. <laughs> but just wanted to throw that out there for people to think about. At, at a minimum, the um, attending should be in the room. <laughs> Sabotage your house staff. That, that could be the second name for it, potentially. We'll think about that. It's a good suggestion. It's also a great opportunity for a resident to present present up from the podium. So mm -hmm. I think at a minimum, the uh, attending should be uh, nearby, be available to. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I agree with that. And I guess the, 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 the terminology that we should use, that if the attending is not doing it, they should be prepared for a, a and i hope this translates into american they should be prepared for a good ribbing <laughs> <laughs> absolutely all right thanks everyone yeah, you can right. use that have a great afternoon happy holidays <laughs> good to see you guys all the best bye-bye okay, happy holidays <laughs>